going guys Cameron here with Canadian Gamer coming at you with another video now today we're here to talk about Far Cry 3 Classic Edition which I was able to finally finish and see its conclusion last night uh, I was streaming it quite a bit I don't know if any of you caught the stream it was a lot of fun and so yeah I wanted to talk a little bit about Far Cry 3 again this video is not a full-blown review by any sorts or by any means, excuse me. Uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about how I was introduced to the Far Cry series. And yeah, just sort of share my final thoughts on this game. So yeah, Far Cry, um, that's a series that, you know, uh, some of us have felt sort of the, the burnout syndrome, if you will. A lot of us are burned out on this series. You know, we feel like Ubisoft needs to take this series in another direction. Um, you know, very similar to the Assassin Creed series as well, you know. When I bought my original VCR-sized Xbox One, gosh, I don't even know how many years ago that was. Maybe around 2014, 2015. Uh, when I bought it, it came with the Halo Master Chief Collection, a digital download code, which I sold off immediately. I wasn't in a Halo at that point. And it also came with uh, a deal where you could actually pick out I think it was two or three games uh, that were on the shelf at Best Buy when you picked up your Xbox and one of the games I actually picked up was Far Cry 4 limited edition now when I when I put this game on uh, again I had never played a Far Cry game before and uh, I just didn't understand the gameplay mechanics you know I saw that obviously it was a first person shooter so, you know, you start the game off, I go in guns blazing, uh, I'm getting killed left, right, and center, uh, a, a bit overwhelmed by the open, the scope of the open world environment, and I put it down and I walked away from it. I returned to it a few times, couldn't get very far. At one point, I gave this game away to a buddy of mine, and then eventually I, I actually begged for him to give it back to me because I wanted to try it again, and again, I just kept trying to get into it. And I couldn't get very far. We're talking maybe an hour or two into it, and I would put it down. So much later, uh, I ended up picking up a copy of Far Cry 3 for the Xbox 360. Same issue, you know? I, I would get into it, and I would feel overwhelmed, and uh, I would sort of walk away. I didn't understand the gameplay mechanics. So uh, later on, uh, I picked up Far Cry Vengeance for the Nintendo Wii. I haven't actually tried this version yet. It's, it's a basically um, a more linear version of the original Far Cry game, which was developed by Crytek. Is that the name of the company? I believe so. Which was purchased by Ubisoft, and then Ubisoft went off and did their own version of Far Cry, right? That's how Far Cry came to be. But yeah, this is Far Cry Vengeance for the Wii. And I also have another version of that game here, Far Cry predator instincts or instincts predator for the xbox 360 and there's also a version of this on the original xbox which i do not have which interestingly enough it has a different cover art as well of the lead protagonist jack carver don't like this game very much it is very much a tech demo uh you know when you try to use the stealth gameplay mechanics in this game no matter how careful you are as soon as you shoot one of the npcs the entire island comes after you so it's yeah broken gameplay mechanics really cool tech demo but uh, yeah we'll le we'll leave it at that right <laughs> i picked up far cry 2 a couple of years ago no i actually really do like this game a lot i got pretty far into it never saw its conclusion very good game absolutely and I also picked up Far Cry 5. Again, again, the same issue as Far Cry 4 and 3. Played it for a couple of hours, got overwhelmed, didn't understand the gameplay mechanics, and uh, put it down, walked away, and never returned. So that's where we get into Far Cry 3 Classic Edition. Now I'm going to turn this light off because I think it's affecting the focus on the video here. turn it down a bit so before we get into the specifics of Far Cry 3 or at least my final um, impressions on it I do want to just mention because I know 
Ubisoft gets a bit of a bad rap. We're already at the five minute mark here, so we'll keep rolling. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, Ubisoft, uh, you know, stimulates the Canadian economy quite a bit. They have a couple of offices. Uh, they've got Ubisoft Toronto, and then they've got Ubisoft Montreal. And believe it or not, they also have two or three offices in Quebec, including one in Quebec City. So for those of you who, who were not aware, I'm not that far from Montreal. Montreal is just a little under an hour and a half away. I've seen the Ubisoft Montreal office on the highway. I've driven past it, and I've seen the Ubisoft Quebec office in Quebec City up close. So, you know, say what you want about Ubisoft, um, you know, as far as uh, a company is concerned, they have definitely done great things for Canada as far as employment. You know, a lot of people out there that are, you know, of a younger age, as an example, that are thinking about getting into the world of game design. Um, Canada is a great place for that because you could go to university or college and uh, graduate, obviously, and then you could look for a job at Ubisoft. It's a, it's a very realistic possibility. So uh, uh, Ubisoft actually did, Ubisoft Montreal, excuse me, did develop in-house uh, Far Cry 2. And they also did Far Cry 3 as well. Now, I think that it was a co-collaboration between Ubisoft Montreal and a lot of the other Ubisoft offices uh, in various parts of the world, but Ubisoft Montreal got the main credits for Far Cry 3 uh, when, when the credits rolled. Now, uh, Michael Mondu, uh, the lead protagonist in this game, he's actually from Quebec City. Uh, so I think Ubisoft Montreal probably did, um, you know, seek out voice actors and characters for this game. From the surrounding area in Montreal, if I have to, I have to imagine. So Ubisoft was a pretty big company at this point, but even still, you know, when you have a studio like my, uh, Ubisoft Montreal uh, building a game like this in house, there at least at this point, it wasn't really gone Hollywood, if you will. Um, they were still seeking out um, a lot of actors from the surrounding area, which is pretty cool. So. Yeah, after Far Cry 3, uh, Far Cry 4 was, co was a co-collaboration between Ubisoft Montreal and Ubisoft Toronto. And then Far Cry 5 was solely done by Ubisoft Toronto. Again, it may have been a bit of a co-collaboration, but as far as the main credits were concerned, it was Ubisoft Toronto that handled that. And believe it or not, the most recent uh, game in the series, Far Cry 6 was also developed by Ubisoft Toronto. So as you can see, Ubisoft uh, places a lot of their faith in Canada as far as this franchise is concerned, which is really cool to see. So moving on, moving on from that, I'm talking about Far Cry 3 Classic Edition. So a couple, I'm going to be all over the map, to be honest with you. I want to give you, you know, my impressions on this game versus the original release that was on the 360 and the PS3. I'll talk about some of the positives and some of the negatives in this game and sort of wrap things up. I'll try to go as quickly as possible. But yeah, one of the biggest issues with Far Cry 3 on the Xbox 360 and the PS3 is the game is a very ambitious game, even for its time when it came out. Uh, you know, if you had a high spec PC at the time, you could run the game at 60 FPS high resolution, all the rest of it, all the bells and whistles. But, you know, for Ubisoft to port that game to the 360 and the PS3, at the time, if you were playing those versions of the game in period, it was pretty impressive, all things considered. But if you go back and try to play those games now, it's rough. It's really rough. Like, there's, it's not only Far Cry 3, but a lot of the games in that period for those uh, seventh gen consoles, they, they suffer from extreme screen tear and uh, poor frame rate. And Far Cry 3 on the 360, I haven't played it on the PS3, but I imagine it's just as bad, if not worse. I think it is worse than the 360 version from what I saw in a recent Digital Foundry video. But yeah, it's rough, man. It's really, 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 really rough. So when I finally found this version of Far Cry 3 a couple of weeks ago at my local pawn shop for $19, uh, 
Uh, that same day, I actually donated my 360 version of this game to the thrift store. I don't need to be hoarding by any means. So I picked that up for the PS4 because I was able to live stream it, right? Uh, you know, that being said, uh, if you were to pick this game up, which, which system should you get it for? Uh, I think it doesn't really matter. I think if you have a PS5 or an Xbox series console like I do, I don't think it's going to affect the frame rate at all. For whatever reason, Ubisoft decided to keep the, the frame rate at 30 FPS on these versions of Far Cry 3. Not quite sure why that is. Uh, but, you know, you might be wondering why did uh, Ubisoft call this the Classic Edition? Because it's not really uh, a remastered version per se. This is really the, the original PC version um, with, I, I don't even know if it's running at 4K. It might just be 1080p. But, yeah, that being said, this version looks amazing. Amazing. Even in the year 2023. We're talking like no screen tear whatsoever. A rock solid 30 FPS. The graphics, like I said, the graphics look really, 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 really good. The water looks good. Way better than those older versions on the 360 and the PS3. So, all that being said, yeah, I bought this game. I put it on. Now, I've never completed a Far Cry, a Far Cry game before. And one of the things that John Linneman talks about uh, on his Digital Foundry, uh, he's mentioned it a lot of times on various videos on his channel, is he doesn't like how when you go into a Far Cry game, you know, you're, you got this huge map, and it's like a collect-a-thon, and you have all these things to do, you know, all these radio towers to, uh, you know, take over, and it can be a bit overwhelming. Well, I used to think that too, but I think I changed my tune a little bit after finishing this game. The reason is, is because when I finished this game, Believe it or not, I didn't do any of the side missions at all. I didn't try to fuck around with any of the radio towers. I just did the main missions. The main missions, that's all I did. And uh, it was a better experience for that, absolutely. Now, this game has... A t it gave me a terrible first impression. Because when you start out, you're severely underpowered. Um, you star as the lead protagonist... Uh, and by the way, I think I referred to this guy as the protagonist, but he's the antagonist. My apologies. Uh, you start out as Jason Brody, and you're on this island in Thailand. I think it's in Bangkok. So you've got almost similar vibes to the movie The Beach with Leonardo DiCaprio. And you start out, and uh, I don't want to talk too much about the story, but there's these bandits or these pirates on the island, and they take uh, you and your friends hostage and uh, Jason ends up escaping, and uh, he's trying to hunt down this guy here, Voss Montenegro. And one of the very first missions, it's kind of like a tutorial mission. You start off uh, going to this huge ship that's uh, sort of on the shorelines. And uh, what's the ship called again? I can't even remember the name of it. <laughs> Yeah, it's really it's really difficult though because you show up. Oh, the Medusa, that's it, the Medusa. You show up and you have to do stealth uh, gameplay mechanics to get through it. So the, the the extent of stealth in this game is basically throwing a rock, getting the NPC distracted so they walk towards the noise and then creeping up from behind. Yeah, it's very difficult because, like I said, you're very underpowered. Um, your health meter in this game. It, it could be comprised of these uh, sections around a, a circle, your health meter. And when you start off the game, you have like one chunk, one little slice. And later on, as you progress through the game, you work your way up to about five or six slices, if you will. And it's a lot easier to play the game. By the end of the game, you're like a T-1000. Like it's just, it gets easier as you go along. But when you start out, you have literally no health. You have hardly any weapons at all and it's like i said it's very intimidating you get extremely turned off by that initial mission the medusa mission and you get through the medusa mission and then you have to go to this other mission where you have to burn down these crops these marijuana crops uh at this compound again extremely frustrating it took me gosh i don't know 10 15 times just to beat that mission and then you get through that mission and then you get through a few more missions, 
and then you start to build up your health and your confidence. And that is actually one of the shining key um, characteristics of this game. It's very much realistic to how it would be if you were with your friends on an island, right? And you had no combat skills whatsoever. Of course, you wouldn't know how to shoot a gun. You'd be extremely under underwhelmed. And then as you start to get in your kills, you build your confidence up. And that's exactly what this game does. It doesn't really hold your hand so much at the beginning. At least it didn't for me. And then as you progress, uh, you get stronger. And like I said, you, you get to the point where you're just a fucking maniac. So, yeah. So the game, the other thing too, is a lot of people have complained about this before. But like, so as you get through the game... Uh, it's not halfway through. It's like, I want to say it's like 75%. You get to a point where you finally meet Voss. Now, he rarely even shows up in the game, which is good. Because when he shows up, it's like, oh, fuck, there he is. But when you finally get to the part where you, spoiler alert, get into sort of like a one-on-one -on -one situation with him, it's not really a boss battle by any means. It's like a quick time event. And it's almost like you're under the influence of hallucinations. And, uh, yeah, you kill him off. And then you're sent to another island. And at this point, you're, you're in a relationship with his sister. And you end up having sex with her. And you go to this other island. So I don't even like to really call it another island. Okay, it's an island on the map that you use. I guess it's another island. And then your next thing you know... Uh, you're, you're on the hunt for this other guy who's actually Voss's boss. I can't remember his name now. Is it Wyatt? Hyatt? Can't remember. And then you do several more missions, a couple of hours more. And then you actually get to the point where you hunt that guy down. Again, you don't have any boss battle with him. And then the final mission is kind of cool because the developers... They did, they did say, they went on record to say they took inspiration from the movie Apocalypse Now, which is one of my favorite movies all, of all time. The final mission, you jump in a helicopter uh, with your brother, and you shoot down uh, the village, I guess, within this second island. And uh, the music in the background is the Flight of the Valkyries, which is was famously used in Apocalypse Now. So really cool set pieces, lots of huge explosions, and, and whatnot, what have you. So... So yeah, mu the music's really good in the game, but the, the main takeaway for me is if you're intimidated by this game or any of the Far Cry games, you just need to understand you can't just run in guns blazing. It doesn't work like that. You're not going to have a good time and you're going to walk away frustrated like I did. Um, there is a huge, like I said, um, emphasis on, on stealth gameplay mechanic mechanics, if you will. And if you play this game and you go right through and you just do the main missions and you don't fuck around with any of the radio towers, you're going to have a really good time. Okay, it's when you start to try to explore the island and you go off on a beaten path, which you could do. And I feel tempted to go back and do that now. But no, if you just do the main quest, it took a long time to beat this game, to be honest with you. It took me a long time. Uh, I played it on easy and for the most part, it wasn't too bad. Like I said, once you gain enough health that you're comfortable to go into these environments, okay? Um, you know, another thing too is you have like a loot sack and it's very small, you can't carry very much. And the only way for you to, to make it larger is to go out into the open world and hunt down like a rare animal, skin it and use its skin to enlarge your, uh, your sack, if you will. Well, I, didn't, I couldn't find the animal Okay, I didn't really go looking for it, to be honest with you. So I fought, I played through the entire game pretty much handicapped because it got to a point where I had so much in my loot sack. Anytime you came up on an NPC that you had killed and you can loot them, I could only take their cash. I couldn't take anything else they had on them. I maxed out my cash uh, tree, if you will. I could spend, a I could carry a maximum of $2,000, which I maxed out. Um, I got all the good weapons in it. You, 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 there's some cool mods for the weapons as well, um, but there's not much in the way of like the color schemes. You, you're, you give, you're given like the choice of like six or seven different seven different colors for your guns. It's not a big deal, but the island in itself 
uh, and Alpha Nerd, I don't know if you're watching this or not, but The Island, man, if you're into, like I said, the movie The Beach or a tropical island uh, environment, this island is really, really fun to explore. There's different relics, uh, special relics on the island that you can come across. A lot of times what will happen is you'll come across like a cave. And you can blow up the cave with C4 explosives and then you can go into the cave and find the relic. Um, the voice acting is really good in this game. So whoever voice uh, did the voice acting for Jason, he did a really, really, really good job in this game. Absolutely. And uh, again, Michael Mondi did a really good job voice acting for Voss. But again, I do want to emphasize, Voss is not really in the game a whole lot. He's not. And so, like I said, there is a lot of uh, gamers in the community that have played this game, but I don't think they actually saw it all the way through. And those who did beat this game, they're quick to just jump to conclusions and say, you know what, Ubisoft, you know, went around, went about the story the wrong way and what they should have done. And I had thought this initially too, is Voss should have been the main antagonist throughout the entire game. You know, a guy that wanted to kill you, maybe culminating with a boss battle at the end, instead of killing him off with a quick time event, and then thrusting you off onto this other island with a storyline that just wasn't really that great. I kind of felt like that as well. But after beating the game, I think I, I don't mind how they went about it. I think maybe the boss battle could have been better when you went to fight Voss. But I actually don't mind uh, how, it, how it ended up. And, and when you beat the game, you're presented with a, a moral dilemma. Do you want to save your friends and leave the island or do you want to sacrifice your girlfriend and stay on the island and what i did was i actually chose the latter which ends up you slice your your girlfriend's throat you kill her not quite sure what happens to everyone else i think they get killed then you end up having sex with uh, voss's sister again she's just riding you like there's no tomorrow and then she ends up telling you that she's going to have your baby and your baby's going to end up as the leader of the island. And then she stabs you and kills you to death. And that's the end of the game. Kind of stupid in a way. Because how does she know that she's pregnant just from having sex with you a couple of times, right? Doesn't really make sense logically. But it's, again, it's just a video game. <laughs> but no, I had a lot of fun with it. I would put it on my list of greatest video games of all time. But you have to play... The classic edition, okay? You cannot be playing these cobbled, compromised versions on the PS3 and the Xbox 360. You have to go and play this version of it. It was really good. Um, another gripe I have is just the character animations whenever uh, your character is loading his firearm or and or if he's... Um, Patching himself up if you get injured. So what I mean by that, you could be in a heated battle where you're getting shot up, right? And you're low on health, right? So you take a, a stimmy pack um, or whatever it is. He has like a tranquilizer and he sticks it into his arm. And a lot of times you, you go like this, okay? And he's like, ah, 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 ah. It goes on for like six or seven seconds. Meanwhile, you're getting shot up and you can't do anything because the game is locked into this animation that you have no control over same goes for the firearms a lot of times you're low on ammo and yeah you can reload your firearm but sometimes you're in the midst of a heated battle and you go to shoot your gun and he doesn't shoot it he ends up for like seven seconds and you're getting shot up and then you die it's really frustrating so a lot of times what you need to do is you need to be really conscientious of your health and your uh, your ammo, if you will. And you need to make sure you're always loading your firearms and your health. Uh, any any chance you get where you're not in you know, the direction of an NPC. Because once you get into a firefight, oh my god. Really good. Uh, as far as the, the gun is concerned. As far as the accuracy and being able to snipe people. It's really, 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 really good in this game. I will say it's a bit frustrating sometimes when you're trying to actually, uh, you know, pinpoint somebody with, let's say, your your scope on your sniper rifle using the analog thumbstick. You're kind of like 
moving it around trying to get the exact spot. Whereas if you were playing this on the PC with a mouse, it would be much more intuitive. But yeah, aside from that, no, I got sucked into the, the storyline and I really felt like I was on this island, you know, trying to uh, come to the conclusion. It, again, it, it rings some, some vibes from the movie The Beach. And uh, man, yeah, and th that's the thing. So I think a lot of people that complain about the Far Cry series and feel like it, it's gotten a bit stale. I think what happened was Ubisoft captured lightning in a bottle with Far Cry 3. They had everything. It had everything going for it. It had the music, uh, the perfect antagonist, okay? And the perfect setting, being on this island with your friends uh, on this on this beautiful tropical island it had everything going for it so when Ubisoft tried to sort of I think at one point they were going to do a sequel for this and they scrapped it and then they ended up coming out with Far Cry 4 which takes place in the Himalayan mountains so Far Cry 4 I'm gonna I feel like I need to go back now and play that through but you, you can tell it's just as far as the environment is concerned it is cool but it's just not quite as cool as being on a tropical island. And then you go into Far Cry 5 where it takes place in uh, Hope, the fictional town of Hope, Montana. Again, it, it's, it's pretty cool, but it's just not the same as being on a tropical island with your friends and, and this crazy antagonist, right? And then we have Far Cry 6 and it feels like Ubisoft has sort of, uh, you know, brought back the rain, pulled back the reins, if you will, and it's kind of in an island environment in, uh, is it in Cuba? Far Cry 6 looks really cool. I have not played that. And New Dawn looks really cool as well. I haven't played that one either. But all that being said, you know, my opinion, what, what could Ubisoft do to, you know, revitalize the Far Cry series? Maybe some of you guys don't want to hear this. Maybe you do. I feel like Ubisoft should come out with a direct sequel to Far Cry 3. Now, they brought back Voss in the DLC pack available for Far Cry 6. I don't know anything about it. But, yeah, I think I think that would be really cool if Ubisoft... Just just do it. Revisit it. Revisit Far Cry 3. That's what, that's what the people want. Anytime you hear a conversation about the Far Cry series... It's at this point, it's it's almost like NHL 94 for the Genesis, okay? We talk about the best sports games for the 16-bit era. People always say, oh, NHL 94. They don't say NHL 93. They don't say NHL 96, 95. No, it's always NHL 94. The same goes for Far Cry. You talk to anyone about which Far Cry game is the best, immediately it's Far Cry 3. So would it be a cheesy cash grab if uh, Ubisoft went back and did a direct sequel to Far Cry 3? Maybe. Would, would it would it renew public interest in the series? Absolutely. Yeah. I think, you know, I don't know how they would go about it. I think it has to be on the island again. I really feel that it has to be back on the island. And yeah, you'd have to bring back Michael Mondu to voice Voss. And, and maybe bring back Jason Brody as well. But I think that makes a lot of sense. Do a direct sequel to Far Cry 3. I think that's what we need. I think that's what the public wants. But yeah, no, awesome game. I, I would give it, uh, I would say, yeah, I think I'd probably give it a 10 out of 10. I was that impressed by it, and that's how much fun I had with it. It was just amazing, an amazing experience. I can't believe I finally beat a Far Cry game. I never thought I would say that about the series. And now I need to go and play Far Cry 4 and see that all the way through. So yeah, I'm gonna cut it off there. The video is just about at a half hour long. I don't think anyone's gonna watch this video because it's way too long. <laughs> but those are my thoughts on Far Cry 3. Let me know in the comments below, did you guys ever beat this game? Did you get intimidated by the first hour, and two hours into it and walk away? Um, what are your thoughts? Leave in the comments below. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this video for those of you who made it all the way to the end. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it and uh, have a great day. Take care.